Hello guys and welcome to TG and the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about how to play games and today we're going to be playing 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we saw some crazy stuff. As you can see on screen right now, we reached a bad ending. As I've said in previous episodes, this game has multiple endings and we reached a bad one. So, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and go back and see if we can try to get a different outcome here. Now if I go ahead and press A here... You've reached one ending. This game has multiple endings. In order to experience all the endings, you need to save now. Once you've saved, you can restart the game with information you've acquired in this playthrough saved. Once you begin the game again, you can skip through text you've already seen. Simply press right on the control pad to fast forward through the lines you've already read. Once you reach lines you haven't seen or new choices, it will automatically stop. The Memories of Escape option has been added to the main menu. Memories of the Escape enables you to play the stages you've completed. It is recommended to save after this order in order to unlock the Memories of the Escape. So, we have gotten one of six endings. There are six total endings uh depending on who you are you can count the amount of endings in this game of anywhere between five and seven but now what we need to do is not hit continue we need to click begin with memories what this will do is this will start us you will start from the beginning of the game with information from previous playthroughs would you like to overwrite the save data let's go ahead and do that Data overwritten. And we begin where we started this let's play at. This game is fiction. All names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. I mean, I'd hope so. And once you start holding right, you'll be able to skip through all of these different scenes. Uh, this actually does lead to something quite controversial about this game. That... A lot of people, this is why some people prefer the remake, just because you have to skip through a bunch of dialogue, and the skipping can be pretty slow. Like, for this video, it's going to take us like half an hour just to get to a new choice. So I can definitely see why a lot of people definitely prefer the remake, because that allows you to skip around to different points on the timeline. But for me, I personally think that this whole thing where we're skipping through text and going back to the beginning is a lot better for the let's play that I'm doing. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll explain why. Uh, going back through this, one big thing is that during games where, you know, they're visual novels and stuff like that, like uh, with Ace Attorney, uh, I usually don't get a lot of time to just talk about stuff. Like, in this game, during the novel portions, I'm just voice acting and then occasionally throwing in a joke. And then during uh, escape portions, I'm voice acting, showing you how to get through the room, and then also occasionally throwing in a joke. I don't get much time to just sit down and talk with you guys like I do in a lot of other Let's Plays. Like with Sonic Adventure 2, that was mostly just me talking to you guys and saying the first thing that came to mind. Uh, and so this LP is going to have a sort of balance between that where... Half the time I'm skipping through a lot of dialogue and talking with you guys, and the other half of the time we're actually, you know, do going through the story and explaining a lot of stuff. And I'll make sure to, in case anybody really doesn't want to sit through the skipping dialogue and doesn't really care what I have to say, I'll make sure to leave timestamps to when we're experiencing new content and when we're just skipping through a lot of dialogue. But for those of you who just want to, you know, sit through the whole thing and listen to me, welcome! Uh, this is going to be exciting. W one of the things that, uh, another reason why I'm going to be... Another reason why I prefer the whole skipping through dialogue thing is because it allows us to go back and make different choices that don't really affect anything but still give us funny dialogue. Uh, which is something that you don't really do in the remake. You don't really get to do that because you're just skipping around. You only go through each escape room once. And... And another thing that, at least for me, in my personal opinion, 
when it comes to skipping through dialogue instead of going th across a flowchart, I found it's a lot easier to build a connection with characters when you're going through this whole thing and skipping through the dialogue than it is with a flowchart. Like in the a sequel to this game, for example, you get a flowchart no matter which version of the game you're playing. And while that game is awesome, the sequel to this game versus Last Reward is an incredible game, I, I sometimes found it hard to feel attached to the characters with the situation they're in because each time I'd jump to a new timeline, I'd be like, okay, where am I? What am I doing? What's happened so far? And so, and maybe that's just because I have a sort of bad memory, but I found it a bit harder to get attached to characters, especially towards the uh, like middle of the game where, you know, everything you've already gone through before and uh, we're not at the end yet where huge reveals are happening. So you're just kind of in this middle portion for a while where you're just jumping around for a bit, sort of experiencing the same things. But you know what? I'll talk about that game more and some of the issues I have with it when I actually get to LPing that game, because I, I will definitely LP that game uh, at some point in the future. I don't know if I'm going to LP the third game, though, uh, Zero Time Dilemma, because I wasn't the biggest fan of that game. I don't think a lot of people were. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'll ever get to that one. Um, let's see. But yeah, skipping through dialogue here uh, allows for us to, like I said earlier, get a bunch of funny dialogue that you never really, that you wouldn't get to otherwise if you were playing through the remake. There are also some instances of, multiple instances in fact, of having, depending on what route you're going on, having different dialogue in some escape rooms, and if you're playing the remake, uh, there's a very, very good chance, in fact, it's almost guaranteed, that you won't see at least one of those dialogue, one of those chunks of dialogue without, uh, without, like, looking it up later, because you'll completely just skip over that escape room and just go to the farthest point on the timeline. So, funny thing about this section right here, where it's asking which pair you want to select, in the remake... Uh, there's an issue with the narration where even if you select like Ace and Lotus or Snake and Seven, the narration will always say that Santa and June are the ones putting their hands on the scanner, even though it like will show on screen the hands of the characters who are actually who are actually putting their hands on the scanner panel. So a bit of an error there. There are some things that you know, the remake fixed, but there are some things that it, uh, in my opinion, missed the mark on. So, I'm, I definitely do prefer the DS, uh, version of this game, mostly because of, mostly from a writing standpoint, like, I'm not, like, a writer or anything, I'm not an author, uh, so I'm probably not the best at, you know, analysis on writing, but it just feels a lot, the remake feels a lot clunkier with its dialogue where people will just point out obvious things and just say stuff that feels unnatural and weird and even though the remake is technically a shorter game because the narration is technically optional in that version it still feels like the remake takes a lot more time takes a lot longer to get around getting around to actually doing stuff uh, just because people repeat the same things over and over and say things that are unnecessary and take up extra time just to say those things. I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but yeah. That only two people could go through, or something like that. No. Wait, that was wrong. It was on the tip of Junpei's tongue when Lotus beat him to the punch. All those who enter must leave. And all those who enter must contribute. That's what the letter said. In other words, no less than three and no more than five. Exactly. Snake inclined his head toward Lotus. The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a number door by himself. That was why he was executed. Din Zero's watching us from somewhere. And we're allowed to skip through the dialogue once more. 
So yeah, it's not too much, but it is a nice touch to be able to go back and, you know, get things wrong. Uh, but yeah, for my first uh, option here, for the first uh, set of doors that we're going to be going through, I'm actually going to be going through the four door again. And while that seems redundant, like to see new uh, information and stuff like that, it would make more sense to go through the five door. But trust me on this, because... I've spent a lot of time, uh, not a lot of time, but like 20 minutes, uh, looking through each, like, individual path and seeing, like, what paths I can take to get the most out of stuff, and there's an escape room that we're going to be going through on this route that has different dialogue depending on which door you go through here, uh, and so... We're definitely going to be going through the five door and seeing the dialogue that comes with that. So this time around, we're going to be going through the four door. Uh, let's go ahead and once again choose the incorrect option here. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5 is 22. 2 plus 2 is 5. 5. It would be 5. That meant there was no way they could pass through door 4. Wait. No, that wasn't right. No, something didn't seem right. Junpei ran the numbers again. And we're allowed to skip once more. Okay. So yeah, I've thought I've thought through this uh, a lot. And I've uh, charted out which path I want to go through. Definitely don't worry about uh, the five door. Because next route we're doing, we're definitely going to be going through the five door. But this time around... Just to experience the most dialogue that we possibly can, I'm going to go ahead and go through the four door. So with our decision made here, uh, we're getting to the room once again with Funyarinpa. That of course was an iconic scene. That episode had a lot of good jokes, but I wanted to go ahead and make that, uh, I wanted to go ahead and make that, uh, the Funyarin scene into a YouTube short because uh, something something about blasphemy. But yeah, this episode had a lot of uh, hilarious moments like Santa getting beaten up, puns about a peeping Tom, just a whole bunch of stuff that I thought was hilarious. So, uh, I always, whenever I'm doing videos like this, I'm always like, be sure to check out the last video if you haven't already. But this is a very story-based game, so if you haven't seen the previous videos already, I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're back here, and we're gonna go ahead and, in a little bit, use that uh, strategy that I did. You'll remember how previously I talked about how I accidentally immediately grabbed the correct tile, skipping a part of the puzzle. That's part of the speedrun strat here. Uh, I might not be 100% like the best at doing speedrun strats here. Let me go ahead and just... Are you worried about me? Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> June blushed and giggled. And there we go. But yeah, I haven't actually watched in full a speedrun of this game, so I'll have to uh, maybe watch through one and see if there's uh, any extra speedrun strats that I can take note of. Do you think this boat is the actual Titanic? The actual Titanic? You mean it, like, slipped through time and ended up here? Before the ship sunk on April 14th, 1912? Huh? What the hell are you smoking? Huh? I think that's the second time he's used that line on June. Did I get it wrong? Junpei grinned and shook his head. No, no, that's not... I mean, come on, slip through time? Seriously. Let's talk about the controversy surrounding the Titanic. Controversy? What do you mean? Haven't you heard of it? It's pretty famous, you know. The Titanic has a sister ship that was essentially identical. It was called the Olympic. Oh, yes, I have heard of that. If I remember correctly, the Olympic was a ship that had a lot of problems, and the company that owned it didn't know how to get rid of it, right? So they made the Olympic up to look just like the brand new Titanic. And then they sunk it on purpose. 
That's right. They also took out a huge insurance policy on it before it set sail. That would mean that the real Titanic never sank. Yeah, the ships got swapped. The real Titanic was renamed the Olympic in secret, and was used as a passenger ship for more than 20 years. Hey, wait a minute. Wouldn't that mean it retired in 1935? Huh? Well, yeah, I guess sometime around then, yeah. Well, what happened to it after that? I heard it was dismantled. Dismantled? Then it doesn't matter, does it? Whichever boat the real Titanic was, it doesn't exist anymore. It was really an... It was either retired or dismantled or sunk in the Atlantic by... A curse, but then that would mean the ship is... Wait, what did you just say? Huh? Sank in the Atlantic because of what? The curse. What do you mean a curse? A curse is a curse. This one is the curse of the Egyptian mummy. Junpei can understand, and we're back to it. So yeah, either way, you're going to run into some talks about the curse. And June will uh, go ahead and ramble on for a little bit. But yeah, after this, the escape room is pretty much ident identical to how we did it before. Just, you know, we're doing it more quickly. And we don't have to deal with putting the shower curtain on the thing and going back and forth between rooms. Because we already got the, uh, the Funyurinpa piece in the shower room. I, I always just refer to it as the Funyurinpa, and I, I'm pretty sure everyone else in the fandom does as well. Uh, I'm actually going to, there was a dialogue choice with Santa that we're going to get to in a little bit, that uh, I'm actually going to be picking the same options as before, and the reason for this is that dialogue is, I don't know if this is technically spoilers, uh, I'll keep this as vague as possible. That dialogue is technically important, and I want to save, you know, doing extra dialogue for that for a different route. So we get the candlestick key. If you need, like, a guide to get through these rooms quickly, you know, just watch what's happening on screen. It'll allow you to get through these rooms that took us 20 minutes, minutes before in only, like, two minutes. I'm pretty sure the opening escape room took us, like, 30 minutes in the first episode and only took us, like, two or three or four minutes when we went through it this time around. Anyway, Santa talks about leaf words. We're, once again, like I said, not going to take it. So, while we're going through here, I might as well explain for those of you playing the remake. If you guys are playing the remake, I'll just quickly explain how the flowchart works. Uh, actually, there is a bit of dialogue after we solve the Funyurinpa that I actually want to get to. Uh, and then I'll quickly explain the flowchart afterwards. Sorry if my thoughts are all kind of like scrambled about and weird, but yeah, that's just... Anyways, we get to Lotus's dialogue, and she says... Hmm, I guess it looks like. And since we know uh, what it actually is, we're gonna go ahead and choose a dog. Maybe a dog? See, you've got your head here, and these are the front paws, and these are the back paws. Junpei traced the back contours. The black contours, excuse me. See? Ah, uh, I see it. I guess you've got a point. Santa, despite his constant aloofness, was clearly impressed. Junpei glanced over at Lotus. She looked stunned. How did you know? You're right. I didn't think you would have been able to guess that. For a brief moment, Junpei felt a swell of pride. So, now we know what it's a picture of, but I don't see the, how that helps us. So interesting. Uh, since, you know, we as the player were able to... Since we as the player previously went through this room, we now know that it's a dog. And, uh... And that's another bit of, like... That's another example of something that's... That's another example of something that you lose in the remake if you're going through the flowchart. Uh, because you don't ever revisit this room again if you're playing the remake. Anyway, speaking of the remake and the flowchart, uh... I'll try to explain this as basic as possible, because the flowchart is very easy to use if you know how to use it. So at the very end, uh, there will be a choice that 
there's the choice between the three doors, the one door, the two door, and the six door. And choosing one of those different options leads you to a different ending. But there's also an extra bonus ending for going down two of those paths, the one door and the six door, where uh, if you do certain things along the timeline, you can go ahead and uh, unlock those extra routes. And the way that you can do that is, is you'll notice that there are keys along the, uh, have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Yes, I have. Ooh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's a novel that had a bunch of stuff in it that described the sinking of the Titanic before it actually sank. Yeah, that's the one. The title of the novel is Futility. It was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But, I know, I know. I mean, I didn't know the name of the book, but the story was the same, right? It was just like what happened on the Titanic? Yeah, well I heard it was all a, ho a hoax. A hoax! I heard that the stuff that matched up the Titanic so well was actually added... added after it sank. Apparently, it, the only thing that, that was the same originally was that the boat ran into an iceberg and sank. But the novel was por published in 1898, 14 years before the accident. Like I said, that was the first print of the book. 14 years later, the author heard about what happened to the Titanic. Figured that was his chance, you know. Just went back and changed some stuff in his novel, so that it matched the Titanic exactly. Surprised by Junpei's response, Jun seemed rather taken aback. R really Really? There's no such thing as premonitions or any of that kind of stuff. For a moment, Jun looked very unhappy, more so than Junpei thought was normal for such a discussion. But it lasted only a moment. With no apparent reason, she suddenly looked up at him, alarmed. But, 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 that wasn't the only book that predicted the Titanic sinking. It wasn't. Yep, and we get information on the books. Uh, something that the remake changed is that I think in the original DS version, they got the the release year of the book wrong, so they had to go ahead and change that in the remake, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll correct myself on that in editing. Uh, but anyways, back to the flowchart. Back to the flowchart. You get those extra bonus endings by going along the flowchart and there will be keys along certain sections. And if you go into those sections and choose a different dialogue option, you'll be able to unlock those keys. And once you get all of the keys, you can go ahead and get the secret, like, important bonus ending on one of the paths. Uh, and then one of those bonus endings will give you a key that you need to unlock the other another bonus ending uh it can be a bit complicated and weird but hopefully my explanation kind of cleared that up for you uh we're here in the freezer once again another once again it's an iconic set piece uh this is an, another option that i'm gonna go ahead and just do exactly what i did last time because once again, it does have some importance, and so I'm going to save the important dialogue for when we do a completely different route. But of course, we will eventually get around to seeing all of that dialogue. I'll make sure we see as much dialogue as we can possibly see uh, throughout this entire thing. Throughout this entire Let's Play. One of my... This is another episode that had a lot of great bits, like uh, Santa versus the grill, where he, where the idiot put his hand on a grill, and I was like, ah, that's hot, and then kicked the grill. Santa is... like, like the narration talked about earlier, he's quite aloof. <laughs> Yeah, I remember not trusting Lotus at all during my first playthrough of this game after this moment. Uh, but we're actually going to get to see a bit more of Lotus on this route. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about the route in advance. Because, you know, obviously spoilers and stuff like that. And I do not want to spoil this game for anyone who hasn't played it. But also... You know, it's not that fun if you're like, okay, this is going to come up in the in this route, this al is also going to come up in this route, all that stuff. So I'll try to save as much uh, talk about this as possible for afterwards. 
But anyways, we put in the 43, get the key card, and we're allowed to leave. And we actually get to go ahead and meet up with everyone uh, once again. So what took us like seven episodes, like seven or eight episodes, is only taking us like half an hour to get through on this one. So, like, again, the skipping can still be kind of slow at points, but, you know, it's surprisingly going a lot faster than I thought it would. I remember uh, during this section of the game... Uh, where Snake goes missing and we all start we all start searching for him. There's this conversation between Lotus and Seven when they're about to start checking all of the rooms, uh, or it's when the Reds go the guts for the Reds go missing. And there's this conversation between Seven and Lotus, which is completely fine in the DS version, but in the remake, you know, obviously they added in some voice acting. And for some reason, during this section, the voice acting is complete is like is completely different from what the text boxes are saying for the characters like it has the same like sort of meaning like the conversation still has the same meaning as before but they st but the lines are completely different for some reason i don't know why they must have like change the dialogue last minute i'm not entirely sure why they would do that and they just i don't know didn't care enough to bring in the voice actors again to reread those lines because the lines that they like actually read were completely fine from what i remember so i don't know there were a few like strange changes in the remake i don't want to talk negatively about the remake too much because you know there are obviously people who do love the remake and I don't want to, like, just constantly be talking crap about someone's, like, favorite version of the game or whatever. Anyways, I actually got something wrong uh, in a previous episode when we were searching for Snake. You don't have to search every area uh, and then it'll allow you to stop searching. You just need to go to the hospital room and then you can stop searching immediately. I'm actually going to refuse and leave here. No, that's alright. Let's go, June. Junpei tugged at Jun's arm and led her quickly back toward the stairs. Was that okay? You don't think we should have listened to her? No, I've got a pretty good idea of what her proposal would have been. We should be looking for Snake. Well, where should we go next? I've actually never seen the dialogue here before. Uh, something told Junpei that Clover probably wasn't in much of a mood to talk. He leaned over and whispered quietly to Jun. Maybe we should leave her alone. Yes, I think you're right. They turned and walked quietly down the stairs. Uh, cause usually during playthroughs I, uh, you know, I'll go through and I'll talk to everyone. Uh, and then on repeat, on repeat, uh, whenever we go through this, uh, repeat time, I don't mind. I forgot to read Junpei's line there. But where? Well, let's see. Go back to the large hospital room, and then whenever I play through these sections again, I'll just go and go to the hospital room. Junpei turned around and walked away from Santa. There was nothing he'd learned from talking to him anyway. Junpei took Jun and left the large hospital room. Where would they go next? And finish searching. But yeah, usually I'll just finish searching, go to the hospital room immediately and do that. So that was actually my first time reading through that dialogue. There was no one there. They had no choice. Junpei and Jun turned around and headed to a different location. No one was there. Junpei figured they might have more luck somewhere else. But where? There was no sign of anyone. Snake, of course, was nowhere to be found. They would have to look somewhere else. But where? Large hospital room. No one to be seen. What next? So pretty much the same dialogue when going back through all of the rooms. So nothing too new, but still interesting to see all of that. Anyway, now we're finally getting to the decision here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose she was right. It wasn't pleasant, but she was right. There wasn't any way the numbers worked out. If one group was four, the other group would have a digital route that didn't match a door. 
When Simon spoke, his voice was strained. Din, you say okay. But yeah, you can just hold down right this entire time. Uh, one thing that's kind of weird about the uh, about Virtue's Last Reward, the sequel to this game, is you have to press the auto button twice uh, to start skipping through dialogue, and and if you press the auto button once then it's like pressing A, so you might accidentally skip through dialogue you've already read if you're unsure if you've read it or not. Anyways, Ace pulls out the Soparil. And that's pretty much where this episode is going to end here. Because, you know, we just have the choice for the doors, and this is actually something that's going to change this time around. So we're going to be seeing something new in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!